And I yield back. And I will uh, recognize the general lady from Florida, the ranking member of the subcommittee, for five minutes for her questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ms. Saul Rinaldi, uh, this committee uh, has heard repeatedly that we can anticipate unprecedented increases in electricity demand in the coming years. How do uh, appliance standards and energy efficiency and building energy clo uh, codes help address the growing load growth requirements? The, growing, the low growth is going to be need to be addressed by energy efficiency. There's no way to actually to get to be able to meet it as rapidly as the low growth is without being able to deploy energy efficiency. Um, and our codes and standards set a baseline, and then what we really need is to have an ad additional uh, dynamic efficiency that's um, using buildings as uh, virtual power plants so that we can meet those additional peak loads. We have to remember that uh, utilities uh, build power plants to meet their peak needs, and so um, buildings can be a part of meeting those peak needs by reducing energy use during, uh, during those, those peak times. But building codes and, and, building st and appliance standards will add additional, will bring additional demand off the grid and further help um, meet, uh, meet the needs of that load growth. And talk about the, the, the speed and the timeline of deploying energy efficiency uh, to address load growth or building a new power plant, whether, whether it's renewable or gas. To permit and build a power plant can take five to seven years, whereas depending on wh whether or not they, the technologies have already de been deployed, um, de deploying energy efficiency in, virtual, in a virtual power plant way, which is connecting all of those buildings and all of those smart systems, can take you know, five to seven months. So it's significantly faster to deploy energy efficiency. And then, of course, as you move energy efficiency in and make, give opportunities, whether it's tax credits um, for, um, to, to buy those more efficient appliances, those are, those are things that can further push the higher efficiency elements into the marketplace. It seems like just a recipe for higher cost if you, if you denigrate the, the uh, ability of energy efficiency to, to help help with the low growth issue. I was also really surprised in your testimony uh, that you pointed out the 2025 U.S. Energy and Employment Report. I had no idea that the energy efficiency sector employs 2.4 million workers, while if you add up petroleum, natural gas, coal combined, that's it's 866,000 workers. That, that's surprising to me. So now that uh, Republicans have repealed tax credits and savings in their big ugly bill, and when you add on the tariffs and you're cutting weatherization, uh, and now obviously they're setting up uh, some bills to come to committee to, to undermine energy efficiency and savings. What, is, what do you project is going to happen to all of those jobs? It's, it's hard to know because that we just had the, the bill had, had just recently passed and we still have the tax credits, the 25C tax credit for, um, which is the energy efficiency credit for homeowners. Uh, they have until the end of the year to take advantage of those tax credits. So um, contractors are working really hard to make sure that, th that their customers know that if they were thinking about putting in a heat pump, they were thinking about putting in more insulation in their home, this is a time to take advantage of that tax credit if they have a tax liability. Um, so, so we don't know quite yet. We do know that these tax credits passed, the 25C tax credit passed in 2005, and it did lead to an increase in jobs. And, um, and it, so as we take those opportunities away from homeowners to, to be able to meet those additional higher technology jobs, which, which do cost a little bit more and be able to offset that with a tax credit, it's unclear exactly what that's going to do to jobs, but there will be an impact. You know, thank you very much because that's where I, I started my testimony. F folks have until the end of the year to take advantage of this. And back home in Florida, do you know how important it is as people rebuild from the hurricanes? We're one year out from Helene and Milton. And this is a godsend because those tax credits can go to doors, windows, insulation. You're replacing your AC with a much more efficient heat pump that uh, will save you money. Uh, so let the word go forth. Ta these have to be installed by the end of the year. And the, the American people deserve these savings. 
it's, it's just not right for Republicans here in the Trump administration to serve the bottom line of polluters and billionaires rather than hardworking Americans. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I yield back. Thank you, the gentleman.